for so long. Father, I pray that it would ever be so. Lord, most of all, I want to thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, for his suffering on the cross and on behalf, and Lord, for his death and resurrection, that all that might believe would be saved by faith in him. Father, I do pray for this house this day. I pray, Lord, that you would give every member here an awareness of the great faith and trust that has been placed in them by the voters of our state will help them to take their responsibilities seriously as I know they will. I pray, God, you would prosper them and help them to be polite in all their deliberations, kind and professional. Lord, I pray that every bill that they pass would be in accordance with thy will. Lord, I pray not only for this house, but also for the Senate and for our governor. Lord, I pray that you just have your good hand of protection and guidance upon our state. And Lord, I ask you that you would make this session, 2015 session of this house, one of the greatest in the history of our state. Lord, I pray not just for today, but for every session of both the House and the Senate. We pray that thy will would be done. We pray in the sweet, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
<coughs> Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thomas T. J. Schiller. District 9, Randall Landy Freeze. The Burial Steve. 
Steele. Present. District 10, Stephanie Mock. Present. Bruce Mueller. Present. District 11, Mark Fincham. Present. Vince Meach. Present. District 12, Eddie Farnsworth. Present. Warren Peterson. Present. District 13, Darren Mitchell. Present. Steve Montenegro. Present. District 14, David Gowan. Present. David Stevens. Present. District 15, John Allen. Present. Heather Carter. Present. District 16, Doug Cohen. Present. Kelly Townsend. Present. District 17, J.B. Mesnar. Present. Jeff Winter. Present. District 18, Joe Mogar. Present. Bob Robson. Present. District 19, Mark Cardenas. Present. Diego Espinoza. District 20, Paul Boyer. Present. Anthony Kern. Present. District 21, Rick Gray. Present. Tony Rivera. Present. District 22, David Livingston. Present. Phil Lotus. Present. District 23, Jay Lawrence. Present. Michelle Ugenti. Present. District 24, Lula Alston. Present. Ken Clark. Present. District 25, Russell Rusty Bowers. Justin Olson. Present. District 26, Juan Jose Mendez. Present. Andrew Sherwood. Present. District 27, Reginald Bolden. Present. Rebecca Rios. Present. District 28, Kate Murphy McGee. Present. Eric Meyer. Present. District 29, Richard C. Unruh. Present. Sarah District 30, Jonathan Larkin. Rob. Devin Andreas. Members elect, present 60. The chair will entertain a motion that a committee of five be appointed as credentials committee. Representative Montenegro. Thank you. Mr. Chairman Pro, Pro Tempore, I move that a committee of five consisting of members elect Montenegro, Alston, Livingston, Atondo, and Robson be appointed as a committee on credentials to receive and consider the credentials of the members elect. You have heard the motion. Those in favor will vote aye. Aye. Those opposed will vote nay. The ayes have it and so ordered. Without objection, the House will stand at recess, subject to the sound of the gavel.
The House will please come to order. Reports of the Select Committees. The Clerk will please read the report of the Committees on Credentials. Mr. Chairman, pro tempore, your Committee on Credentials herewith presents certification issued by the Secretary of State, Ken Bennett, showing that the persons named in the certificate were duly elected to the Arizona House of Representatives on the fourth day of November 2014. Your Committee reports that all of the named persons are entitled to be seated as members of the House of Representatives, 52nd Legislature, State of Arizona, Steve Montenegro, Lila Alston, David Livingston, Lisa Otondo, and Bob Robson. Representative Montenegro. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman Pro Tempore, I move that the report of the Committee on Credentials be adopted. You have heard the motion. Those in favor will vote aye. Aye. Those opposed will vote nay. The ayes have it and so ordered. Place on file in the office of Chief Clerk. It is my pleasure to introduce the Chief Justice of the Arizona Supreme Court, Scott Bales, who will administer the oath of office. Who is it? I am not Scott Bales. <laughs> um, Scott must have been hung up in the State Senate across the way. My name is John Palander. I'm the Vice Chief Justice of the Arizona Supreme Court. It's my honor and privilege to stand in for him and administer the oath of office to the state representatives. Oh, oh is he here? He's here. Come. I'm not going to do it after all. Scott will. <laughs> Members, good morning, and I apologize for uh, being briefly delayed by the Senate, but they had similar matters that they wanted to take up. Um, I'm going to recite the oath as a question and ask at the end for you to state if you do swear or affirm to follow its precepts. So please raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. Bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the office of state representative according to the best of your abilities, so help you God or you do so affirm. Please state audibly your answer. Congratulations and good luck in this upcoming legislative session. On behalf of the members of the 52nd Legislature, I wish to thank you for administering the oath, Judge. The Chair will now receive nominations for Speaker of the House. Representative Montenegro. Mr. Chairman Pro Tempore, I place in nomination for Speaker of the House of Representatives, 52nd Legislature, the name of David M. Gowan, Sr. of District 14. Representative Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman Pro Tempore. I second the nomination of David M. Gowan, Sr. as Speaker of the House of Representatives and move that the nominations be closed and that David M. Gowan, Sr. be elected by acclamation as Speaker of the House of Representatives. You have heard the motion. Those in favor will vote aye. Aye. All opposed will vote nay. The ayes have it and so ordered.
David M. Gowan, Sr. has been elected Speaker of the House of Representatives, 52nd Legislature, and will be escorted to the Chair by Representative Montenegro, Livingston, Stevens, and Meyer. Thank you guys very much. I, I am so honorably humbled by this. As I have uh, some speakers down front here who know the, the feeling right now, and um, I hope I do as well as you guys. I follow the same trail in that we uh, do what's right for this great state. This is a blessed moment for me. I want to thank my wife, Jessica. She calls Jesse. I'm sorry. My two sons, David Jr., who just became the Eagle we talked about, and my little guy, Aiden James Gowan. They, uh, uh, those three right there, they, they put up with everything we do. We all know what we're talking about here, what I'm talking about on this. Uh, in three-hour drives, I got to do that, be back. I got to be up here. <laughs> Speaker Tobin understands. You're up here, and you do the service for the state, and it's a blessing and an honor, but I thank you you guys for uh, putting up with me, uh, letting me follow this dream here and uh, serve the people to its utmost. And, you know, without that, without family, what are you? So thank you. And to my father, Jim Gowan, who flew here uh, for this uh, blessing today, uh, I thank you, Dad, uh, for teaching me the right way and teaching me where to go. God bless you guys. Um, well, I got a little bit on here, and I want to announce some of my uh, uh, dignitaries as well right here, and we're talking about up here in the front row, uh, Mrs. Nancy Salmon, who is the wife of Congressman Matt Salmon. She's representing him today here. I want to thank you for being here. We have some great congressmen in this state, and... and your husband's one of those, and we appreciate all the hard work he does on, on our behalf. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to go, well, I also have, sorry, I have with, with her, and they're somewhere out here. We have Chuck Gray and John McHatton, who are also representing uh, the congressman. So thank you for coming here for him. They, they work for him, and because he couldn't be here, they're here today. But we have you, right? <laughs> um, now I want to go through some of our speakers here. We have some, some speakers who, who sat in this chair right here that I, I'm so humbly and honored to, to sit in. They sat before me and did the business of the state right here. And we're so blessed that you're here and honored that you guys are sitting right here. And, of course, uh, now we say former speaker, huh? but always speaker, right, Mr. Andy Tobin. Thank you for your service. You served our body well, and I appreciate it. Thank you for your, your guidance and leadership. And the first speaker I came under, who actually happens to be the new chief of staff for Governor Ducey, uh, we have Kirk Adams, Speaker Adams. <laughs> and 
And I'm looking out here. I see uh, Mr. Speaker Sossman has come in. He served from 85 to 86. And with, we were going to have a, a speaker, Killian, here today, but he, he fell ill a little bit. So uh, let's do some prayers out there for him. Um, and uh, we'll be thinking of him, that's for certain. And Speaker Wires was coming in today, too, but I see he had not made it yet. So if he comes in, we'll, uh, we'll give him a little shout-out, right? But Speaker Wires was... Well, we do have Jerry Wires, his brother, <laughs> instead, the mayor of Glendale. <laughs> I, I guess that's, that's partly there, right? Um, but I want to thank the speakers for coming down and being a part of this chamber again. And it's a wonderful blessing, like I said. Uh, I hope I can do right by you. Thank you. Uh, we also have with us Treasurer Jeff DeWitt. <laughs> Superintendent of Public Instruction, Diane Douglas. <laughs> and you, I do have uh, uh, Joanne Hart here. She is part of U of A at, uh, um, she is the president of the U of A. Ann Hart, sorry. Did I put Joe in front of that? It's okay? Did you say because I'm speaker? Okay. <laughs> I'm teasing you. Uh, and my pastor, Neil Holmes. Thank you for all those preaching services. Keeps me going. I want to start over here on my left. And, and of course, we had Justice Bales, who, who uh, did the the uh, swear-in, and of course, uh, Mr. Palander, who actually comes from, hails from my region. He was going to, but, but you were able to get here, those senators, I tell you what. We also have uh, uh, Justice Brutonell. <laughs> Justice Timmer. <laughs> Justice Rebecca White Birch. Former chief. And going on down, we have Secretary of State Michelle Reagan, who I served with for six years. I can't see with this thing here. <laughs> Attorney General Mark Burnovich, is he in? Well, I know he's, he has that leg problem, doesn't he? Hopefully, he gets healed up. And then we have uh, Mine Inspector Joe Hart, good friend. <laughs> Corporation Commissioner, Chair Chairman Susan Bittersmith. <laughs> Commissioner Bob Stump. <laughs> and Commissioner Bob Burns. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And if you, you'll hang with me, I want to do a shout out to some of my special friends and um, I already talked about Ann Hart uh, but we thank you for showing up here and we have Major General Michael McGuire Arizona National Guard and his wife Debbie Major General Eric Harwood U.S. Army retired and his wife Tammy Sammy Davis Congressional Medal of Honor recipient and our keynote speaker. And we have Fred Ferguson, Congressional Medal of Honor recipient from Arizona. And I have Tatiana Corrard, where are you? Stand on up there. This is one of my martial arts students and her dad, Constantine. <laughs> F 
Former member, Senator, and good friend Frank Antonori and former seatmate with his wife, Leslie. We have the Honorable Delvis Dutton, former representative of the state of Georgia. And yeah, Mr. Frank Caligari, personal friend there. <laughs> Mr. John Ortolano, who's actually president of FOP and a highway patrolman. <laughs> Mr. Caligari is actually retired highway patrolman. And Jody Bain, we show up here. Jody, well, Jody's a good friend that, that comes up from the Tucson area. And we have uh, Fire Chief Randy Redman, his wife Robin, and he's from the Sierra Vista, Fri Sierra Vista Fire Department. He is also Fire Chief of the Year. Good job, buddy. Thank you. Then we have from Fry Fire Department, Fire Chief Bill Miller. And if you don't know, those two meet together and, and they actually service our whole area, whether it's Sierra Vista or the outskirts. So they, they work together, those two. And Supervisor Robert Corbell from Greenlee County, one of my counties. And Linda Brickman, Arizona Tea Party Patriots Association. We also have Commissioners Tom Fries and Doug Little with us. And we all remember Tom, we serve with him well. Huh? Good job, buddy. In the gallery, I want to welcome Jim Daly and Alan Jones, two businessmen who will be a part of Arizona's economic development picture here in 2015. Thank you, guys. And we all know Alberto Gutierrez. He's the director of the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. And two personal friends, Ken Moyes and Bill Sobeck. Thank you guys for coming and sharing this with me. <laughs> Business on the speaker's desk. I wish to announce that member Bob Robson is appointed as a speaker pro tempore for the House of Representatives 52nd Legislature. and our keynote speaker, Sammy L. Davis, Sergeant First Class Retired Congressional Medal of Honor recipient. The Congressional Medal of Honor is the nation's highest military award. Mr. Davis was born in Dayton, Ohio on November 1st, 1946. He joined the Army directly out of high school, serving in the U.S. Army as a Sergeant First Class in the 2nd Battalion, 4th Artillery, 9th Infantry Division in the Vietnam War. Sergeant Davis received the Congressional Medal of Honor for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity, <laughs> that's a hard one, intrepidity in action at the risk of his life and beyond the call of duty. I believe you'll be inspired by a story as I was, which I'm going to leave for him to share with you. It's my great honor to introduce to you Sergeant First Class Retired Sammy Davis. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. Most of us here on the day of our birth automatically became heirs to the greatest of earthly treasures a treasure envied by those who read of it, dream of it, and pray for it. It's a treasure never diminished by the numbers who share it, the guarantee of the opportunity to pursue happiness and the guarantee of freedom came to us as easily as we drew our first breath of air over American soil. And in those first moments of life, we were gifted with the promise. The promise, 
was conceived in the hearts of men and women that had been burdened with unjust treatment and tyranny. The promise was a dream that they could not abandon. The promise bore the weight of a solemn oath signed in blood. The promise was a pledge that a man or woman made to themselves and whatever child or grandchild might share their bloodline. It was a promise that liberty and justice for all would not be denied them. A promise that no man, no clan, no country would slip under the wire and steal from them this precious gift. The promise in the course of human history is still young, but does not need age to be strong. Its strength lies in the precision of its description and the goodness of its intent as its story is told in the documents of its creed, the Constitution of the United States of America. The greatest hope of those men was that the promised would endure and be everlasting. The possibility of that hope becoming a reality rests in the hands of all those who lay claim to it, be it through birthright or naturalization. Its strength and its fulfillment can be our reality only if we call to mind and instill in the minds of our young the boundless offerings of the promise. Only in a perfect world where the spirit of man has no capacity of greed, jealousy, or hatred will it not be necessary to stand guard on a system of government based on a fair chance for every man and every woman. The spirit of man is challenged with imperfections. So we'll have to work on behalf of our most righteous government leaders, yet devised by mortals to ensure that its original potentiality is understood and does not fail to, sur to, to survive. In truth, this country is much like the child that it's meant to protect. It's perfect at its birth sound in spirit and strong, with boundless possibilities. I like to imagine that as each new child comes to us, Miss Liberty bends over and kisses the precious babe and tells her, welcome little American. We have prepared for you a wonderful place. Many have worked, fought, and died to make it so, all for the love of you and others like you. Those who have died for it, sit at heaven's gate and smile down upon you today. Happy for you and proud to know that their blood has helped secure this gift that we now offer you. Before you lies a land of comfort. You will have access to information and education. You will have opportunities to achieve and realize dreams that you have yet to dream. We want you to be safe, to be secure, healthy, and happy. This flag that I now wrap gently around your precious body is a symbol of honor, a symbol of faith. To you, I give it as a symbol of the promise. The promise I make to you that this country that has been devised and works untiringly to give you a life where you will be treated as fairly as any man or woman, where opportunities for all things lie before you, and that you are free to make your own choices. You have met this day the requirements for receiving these gifts. You are an American. I do not have a plan for you. I have instead made it possible for you to build and for you to follow your own plan. That is the promise. Then I see Lady Liberty stand up straight, holding the babe swaddled in old glory, lovingly in her arms. And with her arms outstretched across the bay, she gently lays the infant on the shore. She smiles before she turns and again lifts her torch of freedom for all to see. And she says softly, be confident. I have made you this promise. Now go forth and show the world what an American is made of. What we hear today 
are a long way from the day when we were gifted with the promise. We have lived long enough to know that it, what it means and to understand its value. We here have seen that keeping the promise takes constant vigilance, diligent work, and even commands that the system and people working in it are persistently monitored to keep it from straying from its original intent. We realize that the problems inherent in keeping such a tremendous promise. We know nearly all good works take time and become complicated when we had hoped that it would be so simple. I'm asking all of you here to share, to sing the praises of our great nation, to remind others how lucky, how truly blessed that we are to be Americans. It's okay to admit that we have not perfected implementation of the course of action ensuring that the promise will live on. But it is imperative that we protect and preserve the country to keep the promise alive. We must let no enemy deny the promise from the people of America. Remind others that is the true beauty of the American plan. The people watch, the people choose, and the people will either secure or fail the promise. We're not caught in a helpless situation. Most people here in the United States have been so well protected. Our grandparents did their job so well. Most truly take our freedoms for granted, or at least they did until September the 11th. The promise has been threatened and suddenly we are painfully aware that this life that we love may not be here in the morning just because we expected it to be here. As surely as we expect water to come from the tap when we turn the handle or the lights to turn on when we flip the switch, thirst and darkness can be dealt from us by hateful acts of terror from the dark part of the world at any time. It has come to thousands of Americans already. Our president stood atop a pile of rubble in New York City and told the world that we were on bended knee, mourning the great loss of life and grieving with the families of the dead. I want the world to take notice as we rest a moment on our bended knee and bow our heads in honor of those who lost their lives. We clutched the stars and stripes to our hearts with our left hands, rededicated to the promise. And we raise our right fist high and defiant to tell the world that we will not allow the promise to stop with us. I leave you with a quote from Abraham Lincoln. We shall meanly lose or nobly save the last hope of earth. God help us keep our promise. Thank you, Sammy. I appreciate that. Appreciate your courage and your love for this nation and keeping us free. And, and with that, you have next to you Frederick E. Ferguson. And I just want to say he was born on August 18, 1939 at Pilot Point, Texas. He joined the, the Navy after he graduated from high school in 1958 and served four years as an aviation storekeeper. As an Army Warrant Officer, Ferguson was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, which was presented to him on May 17, 1969, by President Richard Nixon at the White House. He does preside in Chandler, Arizona, and we want to thank you for your service as well, sir. God bless you.
I think it's just part of me that, that continued on from uh, what I became, you know, uh, Speaker Adams uh, select me as vice chair of military affairs, public safety, and then, then I became the chairman under him as well, and then subsequently with uh, Speaker Tobin, and it just stays with me that what these men and women do for us, you know, the, uh, you talk about us sacrificing to come here to do what we need to do for the people, but without them, we don't do this, and it's just a great honor to have them, and, and if I may ask, all who have served or is serving now in the military or our first responders, would you stand up, please? Thank you. God bless you guys. You're a blessing to this great state. Thank you. Mr. Montenegro. Mr. Speaker, I move that Jim Drake be elected unanimously and with unanimous consent as Chief Clerk of the House of Representatives 52nd Legislature. Mr. Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I second the motion. You've heard the motion. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Appears the ayes have it. Do you have it? So ordered. Mr. Montenegro. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the rules of the 51st legislature be adopted as the temporary rules of the 52nd legislature. Mr. Majority. There's also an amendment. I further move that the temporary rules be amended by adopting the proposed rule changes to Rule 9 as printed and distributed. You've heard the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Appears the ayes have it, do have it. So order. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the temporary rules as amended be adopted as the rules of the 52nd legislature. You've heard the motion. Those in favor, vote aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Appears the ayes have it, do have it. So ordered. Business on the Speaker's desk. Without objection, Billy Cloud is appointed House Sergeant Arms and Norma Chaston is appointed Assistant Chief Clerk. Mr. Montenegro. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that a committee be appointed to notify the Senate that the House is organized and ready for the transaction of business and to act with a like committee from the Senate to wait upon the governor, giving notification that the legislature is organized and ready to receive his message. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Appears the ayes have it. Do have it. So ordered. I will appoint members Stevens. Cobb, Gonzalez, Leach, and Sherwood as the House Organizational Committee. All right, I'm going to do, do a few remarks, uh, and then we're going to go to our prayer, and at the end of the prayer, we'll, uh, 
will allow uh, members points of personal privilege so you can introduce your families. And when we do that, please hold the applause to, to the end of the, the introductions of each member's families and friends so that we can get through this a bit or we're gonna, we'll be here all day. <laughs> Look at this place. So um, once we get to that, just please uh, uh, just go through your remarks with your family. It'd, it'd be great so we can, every member here can introduce their family as well as their friends so that we can get through this thing, okay? All right, uh, before I do begin my remarks, I just want to take a moment of silence for the victims of the senseless killings that we had in France. And I just want everybody to stand and just have a moment of silence with me. Thank you. I have some prepared remarks here I'd love to go over and I want to thank everybody in here, you know. As Philippians 2.3 says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. As I sit in this chair, I recognize that each of you have given me your confidence and trust as we begin this journey together. And I am reminded of that verse. I may have been elevated to speakership today, but to each of you, I am still simply David. I remain the son, a husband, father, and friend that I have always been since I took my first oath of office to this historic chamber in January, this same Monday, the 12th in 2009. On the first day of session, I am humbled and honored to be surrounded by family members, dear friends, and great leaders. I feel privileged to have my good friend, Andy Biggs, continue in the Senate as president, and I am especially excited, I know all of you are, to begin my term as speaker just as Mr. Ducey begins leading Arizona as our new governor. I also want to take a moment and recognize longtime friends and colleagues on my leadership team. Speaker Pro Tempore Bob Robson, Majority Leader Steve Montenegro, Majority Whip David Livingston, my Rules Chairman David Stevens, my seatmate, longtime friend, and Appropriations Chairman Justin Olson. As Speaker of the House, I also want to take a moment to recognize the House Minority Leadership Team, House Minority Leader Eric Meyer. Assistant House Minority Leader Bruce Wheeler, and House Minority Whip Rebecca Rios. Thank you. We've served before, and, and it's an honor to be with you guys here, all of you. Uh, this is the most cohesive leadership team I've seen since I've served, and it is my hope they will serve you exceptionally well. I look forward to working with you all. To the new members, let me say welcome and congratulations. It's an honor to have you here. Yesterday, you were all intelligent, upstanding citizens, constituents per se. And today, you're bringing your values and life experiences as newly minted state representatives as a high duty given to you by your voters. These constituents and the people of Arizona, I know, will be well served having such a diverse group of freshmen joining us as we begin our work. Legislation is shaped and passed through the give and take process and discussion that our members engage in. While we may not always agree, I'm looking forward to fostering lively debates on the issues of the day and promoting the health and stability of our great state. I look forward to working with each member, Republican and Democrat alike so that Arizona continues to be the greatest place to live and work in this nation under God. We will have disagreements, but as I accept this gavel today, knowing that each of you have the best interests of your constituents, Arizona and America at heart. Once again, I'd like to mention my amazing wife, better half, Jessica, 
who likes to be called Jessie, but I actually call her Jess. She thinks it's her mother calling her if it's Jessica, so. My two boys, David Jr., just received Eagle Scout rank as well as a 4.0 I just learned over the weekend, so. In, in, in college. It's his first semester. And of course, Aiden, my little guy as I call him. He's a fine citizen himself and I'm also so very proud of him. Thank you for being my family. I'm hailing from Sierra Vista. My family gives up a lot to allow me to serve the people. And of course, it doesn't go unnoticed. And I thank God every day, and they make this great sacrifice so that I have the privilege of representing the great people of LD14 in this great state. I now have the honor to lead this sacred chamber because of you guys, and I appreciate that, and I will not take that lightly. I'm also thrilled that my father, Jim, he could be here today. Uh, he's a guiding value of service before self that he instilled upon me from a very young age is why I am here. And I thank you very much, Pop. As we know, without family, we couldn't do this. So, you know, thank you to all our members' families out there for allowing them the privilege of sitting here so that they can conduct the business of this great state and to keep us free with our liberties and to keep those focus going forward. Without you guys, we don't have a rock. We certainly have our share issues this year, however. We'll likely be debating, debating everything from the budgets to beer, <laughs> taxis to tort reform. We'll work hard to improve our education system and we need to continue our efforts to eliminate burdensome regulations so that Arizona businesses can thrive. I also expect us to protect the brave men and women who serve us not only abroad, but here at home to preserve our public safety and make up, up our first responders. We need to do all we can to ensure we are protecting and enhancing their ability to keep America and Arizona safe, as well as doing what we can to keep, we can to keep them safe. Yeah, that's a little tight. <laughs> With the events of the last few weeks still in our minds, I'd like to say especially to the men and women in blue, we know you have our backs, and I want you to know we have yours. I've always believed in the vision outlined by my personal hero, other than my father, Ronald Reagan, who once said, the ultimate detriment in the struggle now going on for the world will not be bombs and rockets, but a test of wills and ideas, a trial of spiritual resolve. The values we hold, the beliefs we cherish, and the ideas which we are dedicated. We live in a world where the daily hard work of this body can be largely ignored. While some may look for a fringe event, it can sensationalize. Perhaps we won't be able to change that behavior, but we can rise above the fray by treating each other and this process with the utmost respect. Respect is also important between branches of government. Each branch is equal and each has a different but critical role to play. Governing is easiest when there is respect, so I hope that everyone involved in this process will do their best, and I know they will. As your speaker, as speaker to each member and speaker to the whole house, I commit to you an administration of responsibility and accountability, a willingness to consider all ideas and opinions so that we can serve our constituents and make the next two years very special. This is the people's house. And I believe wholeheartedly that we should always follow the lead of the Boy Scouts and leave things better than we found them. In closing, thank you for entrusting me with the speakership. And again, thank you to my family for their support. And I humbled, I'm humbled and honored. I take this responsibility seriously, and I will not let you down. And I just want to leave you with a, a verse from Romans 13, 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness 
and let us put on the armor of light. Now let's go to work, and may God bless you all, and thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, in closing of this organizational session, please stand for a prayer given by Dr. Jose R. Montenegro, Father of Representative Steve Montenegro of the Surprise Apostolic Church, and translated by Judah Montenegro, Brother of Representative Steve Montenegro. Me siento honrado de estar aquí en esta hora. I am honored to be in this hour. Yo soy un ministro de Jesucristo. I am a minister of Jesus Christ y estoy aquí para and I'm here to bless you all a usted, su trabajo, su familia, to you, to your work, to your family para que todo le salga bien, so that everything may be well y que a este gran a ser el uno de la that we may take this great state to be the number one state in the nation Padre Santo Heavenly Father Padre Justo Father of justice, como ministro de Dios, as a minister of the Lord, y de su santa palabra, and of his holy word, tomo y ejerzo autoridad, I take and exceed this authority, para bendecir, to bless, este pueblo especial, electo, this elected people, te pido por ellos, I ask you for them, por su familia, for their family, por su trabajo, for their work, que todo les salga bien. That they may be well in all. Y en tu santo nombre. And in your holy name. En el nombre supremo de Jesucristo. That supreme name of Jesus. Decreto y declaro. I declare. Sobre esta cámara de representantes. Over this assembly of representatives. Especialmente sobre nuestro gobernador. Especially over our governor. Y nuestro líder de esta cámara. And the leader of this group Pido que les otorgue sabiduría y prudencia I ask that you grant wisdom and prudence en todas sus decisiones que tomen in all of their decisions they take y en todos los trabajos que ejerzan and in all the work that will be done Te pido en el nombre de Jesucristo I ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ Entrégales dominio y poder that you may grant dominion and power sobre nuestros enemigos over all our enemies. Y tu bendición descanse en sus hogares. And that your blessing may rest over their homes. En el nombre de Jesucristo. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. I wasn't looking up. So, members, at this time, we're going to have points of personal privilege. Remember, I, I asked to keep them just a bit short so we can all get through it. We have 59 other members up here. So, uh, they want to be able to introduce their families and friends, and I'd love to get through all of them before midnight. So, with that, Mr. Montenegro. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to a point of personal privilege for the purpose of introducing guests on the floor and in the gallery. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members and guests, uh, 
it's a joyous day. We're, we're very glad to be here. And first and foremost, I want you to know that this is your day. Um, your, your, the families, the members, enjoy it. This is a beautiful time, and we thank you all for being our guests today. I want to first introduce uh, perhaps uh, the most per important person in my life. Uh, many times, as it's been mentioned, you see the representative, you see the, the, the candidate, but you don't often always see the, the spouse or the family behind. So I, first of all, and then I'll introduce everybody, but do clap after my wife. I want to introduce my beautiful wife, Melissa Montenegro. <laughs> Second of all, I want to introduce my daughter, Addie. She's headed over here right now. <laughs> this is Adeline Abigail Montenegro, and she is a blessing to us. So far, there's just one. We're working on more. <laughs> hey, that's your thinking. So, um, so I, I also have very special guests here. My father, as you heard, read the, our prayer, uh, our ending prayer. Father, uh, my father Jose, Dr. Jose Roberto Montenegro. My mother, go ahead. My mother, who is in the gallery as well, I'm going to ask her to stand, an inspiration to all of us. Um, I'm very grateful because my mother has gone through a lot these last few years, but she's a strong woman, as they only know how to make them. Uh, I, I, they're the reason I'm here. Um, I also want to thank uh, my guests. I do have my family. My, brother, my grandmother flew all the way from Canada. Melida, stand right there. <laughs> Melida Alas. Um, she flew to be here with us as well. Um, my brother Judah and my sister Messiah are here as well. I, I want to thank uh, this man, and his wife couldn't be here, but his son is here, a great leader that we have in the state. And I know that there's a lot of politics and partisanship at, as politics brings, but someone's leadership still deserves attention. And at, at this time, I want to thank Robert Graham and his son, Robert Graham, Robert Graham II, for being here and being our guest as well. In the West Valley that I represent, um, there's a lot of people that have stepped up, and we'll hear from them a little later. But I want to thank Ed Robeson. Uh, Ed, where are you? There you are. Ed Robeson, why don't you stand? I just want to thank you. He's been a great leader in the state, and he is my guest today, and I'm just glad that he's here with us. Thank you. That's all my time, but we appreciate all of you for being with us today, and it's your day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. And please, let's... Uh, that's it. Okay. Okay. Let's remember at the end. We'll, we'll clap at the end. But right now, uh, we do have some special guests coming in. We have senators coming over to open our session. Sergeant Arms. Please proceed. Thank you. Madam Senator. Mr. Speaker, we are a committee appointed by the Senate to notify the House of Representatives that the Arizona State Senate 62nd Legislature, first regular session, is organized and ready for the transaction at this time. Thank you so much, guys. Let's have some fun, right? Thank you guys. You may be seated.
All right, we're going to stay on points of personal privilege. We're going to try to get through these things before the, the governor arrives. So other than my majority leader, everybody else, let's, uh, let's stay on, what is that, stay on target? Is that what that is, Star Wars? So I know uh, Mr. Stevens will know that phrase. So Mr. Livingston, majority whip. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and my friend. I rise for a point of personal privilege to introduce guests on the floor and guests in the gallery, sir. Mr. Speaker, as you know, education is very important to myself and my family, and I have two superintendents. You rise for a point of personal privilege, sir? Yes, sir, I do. With your blessings. Yes, you may. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I have two guests in the galleries. I have two West Side superintendents, if they would please stand, and you can hold your clap till I'm done with both of them. Please stand up, though. Um, I have Dr. Gail Plenty from the Dyser School District. Dyser School District has over 25,000 students. It's an A-rated school, and she's one of the outstanding leaders on the west side of town. To her left, I have Dr. Centarelli. Dr. Centarelli is a superintendent for the Peoria School District, and in fact, he has worked there over 32 years. Peoria School District is also at A school, and Dr. Centarelli was recently named Arizona Superintendent of the Year to my two superintendents. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, behind me, I have three of my family members. Um, first, I have my mother, Mary Livingston, who flew in from Colorado to be here again for me. She's definitely the rock of the family. I'm the oldest of three and three boys. And um, they remind me all the time I was definitely the most difficult one. And, and my members that are here that know can understand that. Um, Right here is my son, our only son, Kyle Livingston. Um, Kyle lives up in Prescott, goes to school up there, works up there, um, and just completed his EMT. And my soulmate of 26 years, my wife, Tracy Livingston. Um, somebody, as other members know, you cannot run for office without a family and strong people behind you. And she's definitely that person for me. Um, besides, you know, teaching, at, at, in the Dyson School District. Tracy's also on two different school boards, the Peoria School Board, and just recently was elected um, Maricopa Community College School Board. And we also have sitting up here, Mrs. DeWitt, the treasurer's husband. She also lives, wife, wife. She also lives in our district, and I want her to sit with us too. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Robson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to a point of uh, inter introduction of uh, guests here on the floor. Please proceed. I'd like to introduce uh, Jonathan Dinesman, who is uh, probably no stranger to many of your staff, but um, a stranger to others. But uh, we've made this a tradition. Jonathan uh, flies in from back east uh, uh, for uh, the opening ceremony. So, Jonathan, I'm going to introduce you. There you go. And actually, a, a good friend of mine for many years as well, and uh, who's got uh, 39 years of law enforcement, so I have a guy really packing with me right here, who's the uh, United States Marshal for Arizona, uh, the Honorable David Gonzalez. David. <laughs> By the way, David uh, uh, can uh, t boast a little bit. He's the only one that I've known that's been appointed by two presidents of the United States in opposite parties, uh, which is pretty remarkable. And uh, Mr. Speaker, you asked uh, uh, and, uh, Christine Jones. I'd like to recognize Christine Jones, who's also here. I didn't Absolutely. know if you were introduced earlier. <laughs> and Uncle Ed, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Representative Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to a point of personal privilege introduction of guests on the floor and in the gallery. Yes, sir. Thank you. First, my wife, who has been my partner now for almost 27 years. Uh, she's my rock, my best friend, the mother of our two children, and I love you. So, um, And she has to put up with a lot. Occasionally, I come home grouchy from this job. Um, so, <laughs> so I thank her for that. Um, my good friend, Mayor Greg Stanton, Mayor of uh, Phoenix, uh, who has been uh, a friend, a mentor, a partner with me working uh, to make things better in our state 
both from an education and job standpoint, and I appreciate all you've done for me personally and, uh, and for the state of Arizona and the, and the great city of Phoenix, so thank you. Um, Mario Marquez uh, is a, a, an example of uh, determination. Uh, his parents uh, were deported after living here for 17 years. Uh, Mario uh, is a citizen. Um, he, after his parents were deported, came back to the United States, uh, continued to complete his education, uh, graduated from high school, um, now is at uh, Paradise Community College, and he's a shining example of all the great things that the young people of our state have to offer, and I'm excited for your future and the future of our state, so thank you. Um, I also have the Council General of Mexico, Roberto Rodriguez Hernandez, and uh, some of his staff is up in the gallery. Um, he's here today, uh, and I'm glad to have him here today. Mexico is currently the 14th large, largest economy in the world. Uh, Mexico is the U.S.'s third largest training partner, and Arizona exports to Mexico were uh, $7.1 billion in 2013, making uh, Arizona, uh, or making Mexico Arizona's largest export market. Um, Tens of thousands of Mexican residents travel to Arizona to work and visit friends and relatives and recreate and shop. And it just highlights uh, the importance of our relationship and I'm looking forward to continue to work with you during this legislative session. So thanks, thank you for being here. I also have a gang of uh, friends uh, in the gallery uh, and uh, continuing along the education theme that we uh, had started, uh, Dusty Thomas, a teacher from Arcadia Neighborhood Learning Center, he's taught math there for seven years. Um, uh, Rosita Pinedo, uh, also at Arcadia Neighborhood Learning Center for five years, she supports student learning there. Um, Christine Marsh, an AP teacher from Chaparral High School that was recently ranked uh, the 22nd best high school in the country, and it's thanks to her service. She actually uh, taught uh, my son last year in AP class. Uh, Julie Bacon, a board member from the Paradise Valley School District, board president, also uh, on the board of the Arizona School Boards Association. Uh, Chris Meza, a French teacher and also from the Paradise Valley School District. Jane McNamara, uh, there's Jane. Uh, she is also a teacher uh, teaching English and ESL for many years, now retired and is an advocate for public education. Uh, Kelly Butler, who is a parent advocate and now Maricopa County Democratic chairperson, chairwoman. Um, and Jesus, Ruba Kava, uh, teacher and special ed at the Palo Verde Elementary School. And the, the, the theme there is education, education, education. Um, our state and the future of our state and country depend on educating our kids. And thank you for all you do for the kids of our state. Um, so thank you, Mr. Speaker, um, and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Minority Leader. Representative Wheeler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to a point of personal privilege for introduction of guests on the floor. Yes, sir, proceed. And first, Mr. Speaker, congratulations to you. Thank you, sir. I have with me here uh, Elizabeth Hernandez, the beautiful and wonderful mother of our children. Um, Liz is currently the Director of Marketing for Jewish Family and Children's Services and our two sons, we're going to brag here for a minute, Kevin and Jason, combined have master's degrees from MIT and Stanford. Uh, they work at Google and Facebook. The Facebook son is going to move to London with his wife to open a new office there. And our Google son is been, has been accepted to Harvard Business School. <clears throat> the, the hell with this job, that's what really counts. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Uh, Paul Stander was with us and he left on an emergency call. Uh, Dr. Stander is the Associate Director of Palliative Care for the VA Hospital and Hospice of the Valley. 
I have with me Nick Mann, who served as, why don't you stand, Nick, campaign chair for myself, Stephanie Mock, and Senator Bradley. Also, Michael Sheridan, president of the Young Democrats of Arizona at the University of Arizona. You ready to be embarrassed? A person who needs no introduction to this floor. A friend of ours, a former state representative, the director of operations for the governor, my friend, Ted Vogt. <laughs> Speaker Tobin, Speaker Adams, it's a good to see you both. Again, Mr. Speaker Gowan, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Assistant Leader. And Representative Rios. Minority. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Point of personal privilege, introduction of guests on the floor. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Speaker. I have three guests I would like to introduce today. The first is an amazing young man who worked tirelessly on my campaign, and without his help, I absolutely could not be here today. My campaign chair, Luis Acosta. I'd also like to introduce my best friend and husband, without whom I couldn't be here today. And I just want to say thank you for all of your help, babysitting, knocking on doors, being willing to wear a Rios t-shirt 24 seven, and occasionally put up with my bad moods. I love you. And, and lastly, um, a man I'm very proud of, a man who introduced me to politics, a man who introduced me to politics by taking me to protests and rallies in the 70s when I was just a child and my mother thought he was babysitting me. My father, former president of the Arizona State Senate and first Latino president of the State Senate in history, Pete Rios. Thank you, Madam Minority Whip. And I want to go to my special friend who sat up here to, to go through the beginning process here, uh, Mr. Saldate. Where are you, Mr. Saldate? There you are. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for, for a personal uh, point of privilege to introduce guests on the floor. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First, I'd like to introduce Ruben Guerrero, Sammy Hamad, and Curtis Gutierrez. Thank you so much for accompanying me, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. That's the way to do it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Representative Stevens. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You kind of caught me off guard. I wasn't going to introduce my guest because they're going to beat me up in the parking lot. But with me is my son. You have a point of personal privilege? I'm sorry. You're right. I have a, no, but I do have a point of personal privilege. Introduction of guests on the floor. Proceed, please. Let me start with the other one. First, I've got my, my fire chief, the one who allowed me to train with him and become a firefighter with Fry Fire District, Chief Bill Miller. And my son, my prodigy, Brian Stevens. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Representative Olson. Mr. Speaker, I rise for a point of personal privilege introduction of guests. Yes, sir. Thank you. Just want to briefly introduce my family. I brought uh, about a little over half of them down today. If you guys would just stand up, this is Kent, my 11-year-old, Eldon, my 8-year-old, Sterling, my 4, no, no, my 6-year-old, <laughs> and Mallory, who will be turning 10 in a couple weeks, and the mother of my seven children, the other three are still at home, Karen, and my lovely wife of many years, and uh, soon to be mother again, we are expecting in August, our number 8. Thank you so much.
Representative Brophy McGee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to a point of personal privilege, introduction of guests. Yes, ma'am. Congratulations, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Senator Barbara Leff is on the floor. She served in the legislature for 14 years, six years in the House, and eight years in the Senate. She's a constituent, a mentor, and a friend. District 28 encompasses all or part of seven great school districts, as well as many excellent charter and private schools. District 28 parents care deeply about their children's education. Amy McSheffrey is a small businesswoman and entrepreneur. She volunteered for many years in the Creighton Elementary School District and was just elected to the Creighton Governing Board. Carl Zaragoza was just reelected to a second four-year term in the Creighton Governing Board. He is a senior director at Leadership for Educational Equity, Aspen Education Fellow, a whole bunch of other things, including Teach for America alumnus, U.S. Army veteran, and three-time Ironman triathlon competitor. Francesca Thomas, an essential parent volunteer in the Scottsdale School District, to call her that is to woefully understate all she has done for many years. When something needs to be done, Francesca steps up and does it. She served as president and legislative liaison with the Scottsdale Parent Council, and she volunteers with the Arcadia High School PTO Board, and she's raised, like me, three wonderful boys. Last but not at all least is my nephew, Joe Brophy. He's a commercial litigation attorney with Jennings, Haug, and Cunningham. He volunteers his valuable time and extraordinary talents by serving on the board of Madison Education Foundation. He is a former Marine, oorah, and a final shout out as well to Aaron Gidwani, an active young Republican in LD30, who exemplifies the joyful participation in this process we must have from our youth. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Congratulations. Thank you, ma'am. Representative Gabaldon. Mr. Speaker, I rise for a point of personal privilege, introduction of guests. Yes, please proceed. Thank you. First, I'd like to introduce Emma Moreno. She's a junior at Walden High School. Her parents are Philip and Polly Moreno. Next, I have Jos, um, excuse me, Jesus Diaz. Please stand up. He's a senior at Nogales High School. His father is the Honorable Joe Diaz, council member, city of Nogales. His mother is Laura. And lastly, I have this is Kyle Mariscal. He's a senior. Excuse me. I, I just promoted him. He's a sophomore at Nogales High School. His parents are Ernesto Mariscal and Jeanette Parales. His stepfather is, is Hector Parales. And then also I'd like to recognize my husband of 27 years, Arturo. He's playing host to my guest. Congratulations, Mr. Speaker, and I thank you for this time. Thank you, ma'am. Representative Larkin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for introduction, introduction I guess, here on the floor. Yes. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Speaker, congratulations. I'm thrilled you, that uh, you'll be our speaker for uh, hopefully many more years, and, but you know, we got at least two with you, and I look forward to, the, to many more. Um, first off, I'd like to introduce a, a very good friend of mine, uh, Mitchell Johnston. Uh, Mitchell is a student at ASU. He worked on my campaign. He's a prime example of, of the great education that ASU is putting out. I couldn't have done it without him. Uh, he has a bright future, and I'd like to welcome him here to the house today. Also, I'd like to introduce a uh, very good friend of mine, a very encouraging friend, a very strong woman, Esmeralda Alleman, who is joining us today. This is her first time at the Capitol, so if we could welcome her as well. <clears throat> and on a, on a final note, I would like to um, recognize my grandmother, who could not be here today, but 10 days after election, moved here from Florida, and uh, we've been hustling, and we finally, we, she finally got some downtime. She wanted to be here today, but she's 
She's a little ill, I think, from all the working that we've been doing to get her settled in. But she, she played a major role in my life, and, um, and I just want to send a shout out to my grams, and because she's a wonderful woman, and I wish she, she, she could have been here today. And uh, that's it. That's all I have, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Representative Carter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for a point of personal privilege. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome, members, and uh, congratulations to you, Mr. Speaker, as well. Thank you. Uh, today, I would just like to introduce a couple guests that I have on the floor and a few watching from home. First and foremost, I have to introduce my husband, Jay Carter, and without his love and support, I would not be here today. Um, and we just celebrated 20 years in November, so big milestone. Great friend of the family, Proxy Sandoval, has been with us through thick and thin and just appreciate your support through it all as well. I also have a longtime near and dear good friend, Cynthia Weiss, newly elected to a governing board of an excelling district, uh, a district that I think we will be hearing a lot about this year, Cave Creek Unified School District. And then last but not least, Watching on TV at home is my mom, who watches us every single solitary day on Capital TV, keeps the TV on their toes, makes sure the microphones are working and the cameras are working. Just want to say thanks, Mom, for your love. Miss you. Wish you could be here with us today. And also my mother-in-law, Juanita Carter. And here's to a fantastic session together. Hey, you're Representative Carter. Representative Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for a point of personal privilege introduction of guests. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And, and first of all, congratulations. Thank you. I would like to um, introduce um, a special guest that I have. First, my eldest sister, Antonia Campoy. She is... Uh, my mom always told us that to call her mom because she was our second mom and really helped my mom take care of um, all 11 of us. Um, uh, also on the floor, I have um, a special, uh, two special guests that I would like to stand up and really have a warm welcome. They are uh, my husband and, and, and my uh, godparents and longtime friends. Um, used to work together, and, and, and they married us a long time ago, over 40 years ago, Mr. and Mrs. Um, Lovett from Scottsdale. Uh, Mrs. Lovett, Lois Lovett, uh, my godmother, is um, a former teacher, and I taught with her for many years, and she's the one who actually encouraged me to go on to, to college and earn my, my degrees in education that I did, so I really owe her a lot. And Mr. Lovett, um, my godfather, um, is a, a veteran and also a, a long time, I don't know how many years, uh, retired from the U.S. Postal Service. So I, I, I'm really thrilled for them to be here, and I thank you. And I also have a Canadian guest here, um, if you could stand up also to get welcome. He is a, a friend that is visiting here, visits um, Arizona every winter, um, Rick Ash. And I thank you, thank them for being here. And, and, and again, um, speaker, um, I thank you for, um, and I congratulate you for, congratulate you again. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Representative Pratt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to a first of point of personal privilege. Yes, sir. Continue. Uh, first of all, thank you, Project Central. Congratulations to you, sir. Thank you. And I would like to introduce uh, some of my family members that have joined me today. My wife, Dr. Janice Pratt. My son, Brian Pratt. And his daughter and my granddaughter, Jessica Pratt. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome to the house. <laughs> Representative Otondo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for a point of privilege, introduction of guests on the in the gallery and on the House floor. Yes, ma'am. 
proceed. Uh, once again, th congratulations, Thank speaker. Um, I'm really happy to introduce Mayor Meck, Mayor Jackie Meck from Buckeye, uh, members and guests one year ago, yesterday, Buckeye became a city. So I would also like to give a big shout out to the council members of Beck Buckeye who are in my office. I'm so glad to have them here, and also Vice Mayor. Also, it's an honor to introduce Lenore Stewart. Lenore Stewart is a Yuma County uh, Supervisor and also Yuma Citizen of the Year this year. My dear friend Brian Grogan is here uh, visiting on this wonderful day. Also up in the gallery, my cousin Tisa Echeverria Maclor, another beautiful Basco. Hello, cuz. And also my constituent, who was introduced by Dr. Meyer earlier, and that is Jesus Rublikava. Congratulations, Jesus. He became the president of the Arizona School Board Association. So shout out to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome to the House. Representative Coleman. Mr. Speaker, I rise to the point of personal privilege introduction of guests. Yes, sir. And Proceed. congratulations to you, you, by the way. First, I'd like to introduce my daughter, fifth, fifth of my six daughters, Kelsey Holgate, my wife, uh, mother of six daughters, and grandmother to 11 grandchildren, Roxanne Coleman, two of my dearest friends, the mayor of Gilbert, the Honorable John Lewis, and the mayor of Mesa, the Honorable John Giles. And watching from my office, my daughter Christy Porter with three of our grandchildren, Cole, Allie, and Emma. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the House. <laughs> Representative Alston. Mr. Speaker, I rise to a point of personal privilege for the purpose of introducing guests. Yes, ma'am. Proceed. Thank you, sir. Mr. Speaker, I am proud to have three very special people with me today. Um, first of all, Suzanne Feaster, who is my longtime friend and a fantastic leader of health care in this state, um, providing services and outreach and information to so many of us who need that special care. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you for being here and for being my friend. Secondly, I have two folks with me who worked on my very first campaign in the 70s. And one of those is Miss Bobby Roland Mascalier, who was my student assistant the first year I taught at West Phoenix High School. But Bobby, thank you for being my friend, and thank you for being here today. The other one is my baby boy, my son Charles, who was also involved against his better judgment in my first campaign. Together, he, his sister, my mother and I, and my former husband hit every single door in our district once and a half times. And so, uh, Charlie, I love you. Thank you for being my son, and thank you for being here today and to continue putting up with my um, desires and inspirations. Mr. Speaker, congratulations. I look forward to working with you and the others in your caucus, as well as my own members. And I know we're going to have a fantastic year. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome to the House. <laughs> Representative Shope. Mr. Speaker, rise to the point of personal privilege, introduction of guests in the, on the floor and in the gallery. Yes, sir. Proceed. Mr. Speaker, first to the gallery. I would like to introduce the superintendent of schools for Pinal County, Ms. Jill Broussard. And seated on the floor with me today, a man with 22 years of law enforcement experience in Chandler and now the chief deputy of the Pinal County Sheriff's Office, Mr. Steve Henry. Uh, good. I, I didn't break the rule there, guys. Everybody started clapping, Mr. Speaker. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Diane Pretchell. And a uh, person that really needs no introduction, we see him on Fox News and other television uh, channels all of the time, uh, Maricopa County can have their sheriff. But in Pinal County and in rural Arizona, we know that one of our biggest voices is uh, Sheriff Paul Babu. Not only is he our sheriff, 
but he's also a retired Army officer, served our nation in Iraq and uh, in Yuma, securing our border. Pinal County Sheriff Paul Babia. Thank you, sir, and welcome to the House. Representative Sherwood. Mr. Speaker, I rise for a point of personal privilege for the introduction of guests on the House floor. Yes, sir. Proceed. Thank you, sir. Thank you, members. Uh, friends, my first guest is very, um, very important to me. The nature of our relationship is simple, uh, but you all understand it to be very difficult. Um, this is my girlfriend, Liz Forsyth. She's president of the Arizona Counselors Association. And everybody who's sitting on this floor today at a desk understands that you could not be here without somebody who cares about you cheering you on across that finish line because it's hard to get up in the morning and throw yourself through the wall day by day. So won't you join me in welcoming Elizabeth Forsyth. Uh, my second friend, I think a lot of you have already met already. Um, his name's Darren Fisher, and uh, I became friends with him a few years ago. We were hanging out one day, and I asked him what he does for fun in his free time. And he thought about it, and his answer was, I have 63 employees. I'm getting all of them into the middle class. That is what I do for fun. And so for a man who's a job creator, who's part of the Arizona comeback, it seemed appropriate to me that in the People's House, we should have a community business leader. Won't you join me in welcoming Darren Fisher? I have another very special, important guest with me today. Um, I have the great honor of representing District 26, which includes Tempe, and the ASU main campus. I have a dear friend named Kip Hodges, and he and I talk science endlessly. Uh, what Kip enjoys is when there's movies like Gravity or The Theory of Everything. Students get inspired, and they're going to walk through his doors because they want to get more of that great knowledge to go out there and do whatever it is that they want to do in their life. I wanted to bring somebody here who can transcend partisanship. Somebody who understands that in 2015, in this thing, this postmodern world, how are we going to get there without math and science and technology? I've got somebody who I believe is symbolic of these virtues. It's not that difficult. Step one, join the astronaut corps. <laughs> After 30 years of a veteran and a background in science and math and engineering, this man has built the right stuff as it has come to be called. And so he became a candidate and passed into what is now the astronaut corps. Step two, climb aboard a rocket with 2.5 million moving parts and shoot it up into space at five miles a second, 17,500 miles per hour. Step three, build a space station. Fix a telescope. Explore the great beyond. Guaranteed best ride in the park and guaranteed to put some sweat in your hands. Friends, this man should inspire us all won't you join me in welcoming American astronaut Mike Fossum? Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. And we're going to be moving into a little bit of a break, so I'm going to be asking the majority leader here to put us at a recess. So we're going to be just adjusting here for the governor to come in so he can give us the state of the state and give us a reflection on his um, presentation of what he wants to do with the state here in the upcoming year. And so remember that we're going to be doing a bit of shifting. So if you hear people talk to you, we got to move around than we do. We always ha we have senators coming in. They have some family members just as well. So we're going to have to adjust for all of that. So with that, I also want to say I, I did not throw a shout out to my former seatmate, Representative Ted Vogt. He is a deputy chief with the governor as well, and I just wanted to make sure I did that now that I saw him over there. But with that, anybody who is elected to a, a county or municipality government, please stand for me. If you have not been recognized, I want to recognize you now. And thank you for your service, Mr. Montgomery, and all these others who are out there. God bless you guys. Thank you for your service. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to the majority. Speaker, I move that the House stand at recess to the sound of the gavel. Without objection, the House must recess, subject to the sound of the gavel. 
Now, thank you, family, friends, and dignitaries. At this time, we are re reorganizing the House Chamber to accommodate the Senators and their guests for the joint session. Thank you for being our guest today. God bless you. All right, you guys were just watching as Arizona's 52nd legislature kicked off its opening, uh, or first regular session. You watched the opening ceremonies. I'm going to wrap things up here. We're about to go live again in just a few minutes to watch as Doug Ducey gives his State of the State address. So please join us there in just a few minutes, and uh, we will be having another Fox 10 News Now update for you guys shortly. I'm Samia Khan, and I'll see you guys soon.